Everyone, welcome to another Founder Wisdom Podcast, Sales Wisdom Podcast, that would be uh, with Matthew Pruitt, uh, today Vice President, BizDev at Key Outreach. We're going to talk about cold emails and all sorts of outreach content. I'd like to talk with Matt as well and a little bit of biohacking thrown yeah. in there. So Matt, welcome to the pod. Tell us a bit more about yourself and uh, Key Outreach. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Charles. Uh, like you said, the Vice President of Business Development here. I actually kind of fell backwards into this role. My <laughs> my background is actually kinesiology, and I have a master's in health care administration. Uh, just kind of finishing up all that during the pandemic, and we know the uncertain times, uh, especially working in gyms where healthcare was really difficult. So I took a chance with a, a startup called Key Outreach. We're an outsourced business development team. We help agencies and SaaS companies scale while saving internally. Um, we know that uh, lots of churn and burn at that employee position um, mm -hmm. tend to uh, stretch agencies and SaaS companies thin. So we help them scale without having to hire internally. Yeah. And you're right saying this. A lot of people hiring for sales roles um, do not get the results that they want. They can't even cover the salary of their uh, SDRs or SDR managers or, or VP sales or VP biz dev, for example. Uh, let alone talking about like marketing execs at a company or even uh, junior positions. It's really hard to attribute an ROI on most of these positions, mm -hmm. which is why us agencies were an interesting option for most of the uh, of the businesses out there. So tell us about like your specific offering to who you tend to, to go after in terms of clients and how is it a, a better option than the the classic route of either hiring or doing the job oneself, which is even worse. Yeah. So uh, look, doing outreach is, is really hard, right? Whether you're doing cold email or whether you're doing cold calling. And so we help our clients niche down, determine what they do really well. We help them identify who their ideal customers are going through a series of exercises through case studies. And then we help them write cold emails. So we have a copywriter on staff, and what they do is they take a bunch of information that we gather from our clients and we help them write those cold emails. We automate that through four-step email sequences. We set up lookalike domains. We set up alias email accounts, reaching out as if our client is the one performing the outreach. And then we have inbox management. So when we have a prospect that's interested in having a call, we loop in the primary email address and we set that call on the calendar for them to take. So it's a pretty seamless process. Uh, fully managed program. We offer weekly reporting. We can integrate with your CRM, so you have visibility. And then we have bi-weekly huddles. So we're always in contact with our clients. And now the reason why it's a game changer to come with an outsourced vendor like Key Outreach is because the ramp time for us to get started is around three weeks. And particularly because we need to warm up that lookalike domain because we know the Google gods, Outlook gods of the world, They'll shut you down if you begin high activity on a fresh new domain without proper warming. Mm -hmm. Now, the flip side of that is you don't come out with a, a vendor like Key Outreach and you hire internally. It's going to take three to six months to get them ramped up and understanding your business and your unique value proposition. And then when they begin selling, are they going to turn out, right? And so it's a gamble and uh, some agencies would rather have it internally and some would rather just have us handle it for them. And why cold emailed VS cold calls or LinkedIn outreach, for example? So I'll start with cold calling. We are a volume game. So we're sending lots of emails. Uh, we have a partner where we're sending around 8,000 emails. So it's simply just not scalable to make that many phone calls. Mm. I'd have an anxiety attack uh, having to cold call 8,000 people, right? And so really the scalability is just not there. So we're able to reach a, a much larger audience right? Gather a lot more meetings this way. I know some may argue uh, that statistic, but it's really just true, right? We're able to send lots of messages. We're out of getting lots of responses. Some of those responses turn to meetings, some of those meetings turn to closes and so forth. Now with LinkedIn, now I've always thought of LinkedIn and this is the way that I use LinkedIn. I use LinkedIn to network, right? It's a place where I've learned and get educated about my craft, the industry, best practices. I, it's the the pitch slapping in the inbox is is uh is a, is quite a turnoff right and 
while I've not had much success with it, I know a lot of our clients that have went with vendors that offer LinkedIn automation have also not had a lot of success with it. So um, we just really try to stay clear of our reputation kind of being tarnished on something like a LinkedIn platform. Hmm. I also use LinkedIn for content and mostly networking. Um, LinkedIn also was limited quite drastically a couple of years ago. I'm not sure if you remember the time we could connect with like 300 folks per day. And from one day to the next, it became like 30. And that that yeah. actually pushed me to merge my LinkedIn agency into a cold email agency. I was like three years ago or something like that. So cold email, yeah, you're right. The, the scalability uh, factors uh, is is definitely super important. Um, as your role as a PP uh, biz dev, do you do you get to manage an SDR team as well? Or yeah, so when I got started, I was just a lonely BDR. I was handling you know kind of all the functions of prospecting, and uh, I was taking some stabs at content creation, being a copywriter for the team. Uh, fast forward to the VP level, I do have a team underneath me. I have two. BDRs who set the meetings, they, they load up the campaigns, they do the prospecting, a lot of that tedious work um, that, gets, that gets my eye off of the ball, which is focusing on meeting preparation and sales calls. And that's another attribute of, uh, you know, why we're a company, right? Uh, we, we work with a lot of agencies between that 11 through 50 bucket. That's our, that's our prime uh, ideal customer. And so you're dealing with a founder, a CEO, that is all, all of the functions of business, right? They're everything from the janitor to the CEO, everything in between. They simply cannot handle an outbound funnel, mm. right? And so it's nice to have a team to be able to fill up your calendar with meetings so that you can focus on what matters. Yeah, closing, innovating, hiring, uh, amongst others, finance, of course. In your case, um, what have been some headlines of cold email that has worked right? And generally speaking, what kind of copy does work well uh, with your, your cold emails? Yeah, so, well, for starters, when I got on with Key Outreach, we, you know, and a lot of people, we were very positioned, we were positioned very well. Anybody that was legion agencies in cold emails, even cold calls, positioned very well through 2020 and 2021 because you could send massive amounts of volume off of a single account we could have 12 accounts going out with 250 leads per account on a single domain, and we would have really good success. Uh, you fast forward to now, or even uh, the spring of 2022, when Google and Outlook really uh, locked us down, you couldn't send that many leads out, right? And so the infrastructure for cold email deliverability had to change. And so I follow a lot of really great people on LinkedIn. Uh, shout out Jesse Ouellette. Um He's, he's really the catalyst for how we revamped our infrastructure with email. And so it's multi-domain, it's multi-inbox, really no more than around four inboxes per domain is our suggestion. And then never sending more than 50 emails per account. Got it. What about niches uh, that you've seen that are hot right now? Let's start with clients that you're closing right now. And let's start for, and, and after that with your clients, who they're targeting that is working very well in this 2023. Yeah. And so um, just before I dive into that, uh, we'll go, I just want to address your question about content creation. Yeah. And so a lot of the time with copywriting, you know, it was me, me, me. Let's, let's talk about all about key outreach, right? This is yeah. who we are. This is who I am. This is who we've done it for, but really we weren't talking to the buyer, right? We weren't right. talking about the the audience that we were reaching out to and we were asking for time. We had hard CTAs uh, and that just simply doesn't work anymore. And mm -hmm. so the way that we handle it is, and I just, I just pull it up right here. So our first line is really, um, we love the pattern interrupts. So instead of high first name, it's more of, you know, how are you, you know, handling this type of um, assumption of the business, right? First name. The second line is we like to ask a question about the challenge or the pain in the, in the specific job, task, function, in the process, or the industry that they live. Hmm. And that third line, we also like to make an assumption about the challenge company experiences and the results of not solving that challenge results in a uh, company leveraging our solution, right? And so forth, we like to induce curiosity. We like to say, hey, with our approach to this challenge, this is how you can realize 
your desired result. And mm-hmm. then that fifth line, we just social proof is everything, right? So who have you done it for? Okay. And then our sixth line, just call it the call to action. We don't ask people for time. We keep it very soft. Charles, is this worth exploring? Okay. Interested in learning more? Okay. Worth a chat? Because the, the idea is to get a response, right? You, just like we shouldn't be expecting to close a meeting on the first call, you shouldn't be ex- expecting to have a meeting on the first response, right? That right. first response gives you an option to have a conversation. Yeah, to not be de- desperate, to not be so direct like most folks out there. Um, and yeah, to to just feel different and feel like you're taking your time and you're not needy which is super important i love the pattern interrupt uh thing it made me think me i like asking questions very much reply based um Mm -hmm. my emails so it's like the question and the cta is super important so thank you for for these tips what about the the headlines like do you go uh, one word headline what what type of headlines you like using well, it depends, you know, if it's a seasonality thing, or if I'm reaching out to new roles, um, I tend to say, you know, ready to make a difference at company, right? And that tends to get people, if you, say, if you're in the one to two years at your company, or you've gotten to a new role, obviously, you want to make a difference, right? And so that's a really catchy spot for subject lines. But also, we've had a lot of success just naming what we do, right? Okay. We set appointments, we set meetings. We set appointments as well. Yeah, or appointment setting service or, you know, or more meetings, right? I find that the people that are actually searching for the service that you provide, if you have that in your subject line, it's going to be more appealing. The people that are actually really interested in the service, they're going to see that. They're going to see that in the subject line. They're going to want to learn more. Interesting. Interesting. What about the niches? Um, Niches that have been working for you guys, niches that have been working for your clients. Yeah, so we cut our teeth on influencer marketing and social media marketing. So we have a lot of good clients in the agency space and within the platform space. Uh, Most notably, our client Tagger Media, an influencer SaaS platform out of Santa Monica, Mm -hmm. Uh, utilizing being able to uh, utilize Tagger with having robust insights into just the influencer marketing space. Uh, we're able to kind of we're able to position uh, certain agencies in a way where they can have some success. What about their clients? Because these clients, for example, uh, a SaaS or influencer agency, it's important that they have a nice offer, right? So not so much competition, an offer that makes sense result from a results perspective, from a financial perspective, and that they have good experience delivering that for similar clients, that they have testimonials. So what uh, about their clients that tend to work? I've seen I've seen tech kind of decline this year because of layoffs, uh, for mm-hmm. example. Although they're my favorite clients, me being a technologist. Um, mm-hmm. Do you do like marketing agencies as well? But well, I mean, influencer agencies is hot too. I have a couple of them as as clients. What about uh, TikTok agencies, TikTok ads? Because I've seen that those don't have like a clear offer as most of them are new. And Ecom brands, for example, are overly targeted. Um, that's what mm-hmm. I found. So any other good niches um, that you have in mind? Well, we tend to work with all different types of marketing and advertising agencies. See, the, the, the thing that we find with the agency space is they tend to say full service and they do offer full service. Yeah, uh, They say that they do around seven to eight things. Mm-hmm. you know but really they champion one to two of those things yep and they outsource the rest or the rest is all a cart or the rest is land and expand so anything that kind of lives within the digital marketing space seo web development at the agency level i mean this is a part from the influence of marketing but with tiktok i mean it's it's just so highly relevant more relevant than ever and so we are finding some traction with agencies that are offering that tiktok whether it's a SaaS company that offers the API or agencies that understand the algorithm and understand how to be searchable on TikTok. I actually, um, I listened to Joe Rogan a lot and he had a guy named Adam Curry called the pod father, the, the, the father of podcast, the starter. Yeah. And they were talking about how Google is getting their searches are going down because they're competing now with TikTok. 
right? Jeez. People aren't using Google as much to search for retail or restaurants, social things. I go to TikTok to find out, you know, what's the restaurant I should go to this evening or for Valentine's Day coming up? What's the most popular restaurant, right? They're not going to Google anymore. They're going to TikTok and they're relying on influencers to promote these types of things. Hmm. Got it. Interesting. We're almost uh, finishing up here, here with the pod. How do you condition your brain from a biohacking perspective to generate more leads and, and close more meetings on a daily basis? Yeah, so it starts with uh, kind of like we were talking before the podcast. I start with two giant glasses of water as soon as I wake up in the morning. I hold off on around one to two hours for my first round of caffeine. I say first round. <laughs> uh, and then I go to the gym and I just part of what part of my mindset is, look, you're going to go through difficult things every single day. You're going to have challenges. So my mindset is let's go to the gym and let's do something that's really challenging, that really sucks. And there is nothing through my day that could be worse than this. So I start my day by just getting the, the suckiest thing out of the way. And so the challenges that I face throughout the day are going to be a lot less. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, I utilize some different types of supplements that help with cognition and mental performance, one being in acetyl tyrosine. Uh, it's really good for uh, recall, uh, cognition, another brand called Cognizant and another brand called Alpha GPC, right? And so the, la the latter two are kind of derivatives of acetylcholine, which are, are known and clinically known to enhance performance and cognition. And so I like to come to all my sales calls like a well-oiled machine and these products help me get there. Yeah, focus and calm, uh, which is energy that listeners can probably feel in you and I, which is the... The best state to be in energized but calm you know so that's that's why some of these nootropics can help with that especially the gym um that's the, the best one to calm yourself down you know like nothing like a, a sparring session to to have the rest of your day like really in in a, a calm state because yeah sparring is obviously hard and stressful in many cases so yeah i found out yeah. that yeah doing boxing sometime and Uh, the gym also can can be good for that or just going outside for a little sun exposure um in your 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 swimwear and uh doing some yoga can can be fun um and energizing yeah. for the body yeah i echo that you got to get sunlight right vitamin d especially yeah. for a man uh, it's a precursor to testosterone and for testosterone i've written that the other day on my Twitter is after caffeine is a best brain enhancer. Um, it is what gives mm -hmm. you energy and drive, you know, uh, as a man, obviously. So mm -hmm. Matt, yeah. thank you for that. Uh, it's been, it's been short, but it's been sweet. So yeah, uh, I guess we'll, very impactful. we'll, we'll stay in touch. Where can uh, people find out more about you and key outreach? So you can always visit our website, it's just keyoutreach.com. And then, I'm not very social on these other platforms, but I do, uh, I'm very active on LinkedIn. So you guys can always find me at Matthew Pruitt. Uh, should be pretty easily searchable if you're looking for key outreach. Um, but those are really where you're going to find me. And I, I try to stay uh, 